it's Rebecca, Kids Pastor at First Assembly Walla Walla, and I want to thank you for joining us today for First at Home. We want you to gather your family together and invite others to listen and be blessed as we learn and grow together. Enjoy! How are we doing today? Is it like football season already? Is that it, is it what's going on? Is it hunting season? Is it what's going on today? What's going on? It's what? It's church season. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, it's been so good for the last few weeks to, to work together on laying this foundation of faith. And Pastor Levi, thank you for taking us through this journey of faith. Is it be good for anybody else? Yeah, okay. Thank you. We need, we need, we need, we need your... We need your feedback. Please give us your feedback. We crave it. We need it desperately. But it's been so good to talk about, you know, the, the grace of God and, and repentance. And today, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. And um, are you guys ready for this? <clears throat> are you ready for this? Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Preach it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be doing some things this morning. Just, just don't mind me. Okay? Just don't mind me. Just, just follow along with me. Are you guys ready for this? I like, I like visuals. I like visuals. But you don't know yet what it's for. But I like visuals. Who else here likes visuals? Yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, who raised your hand? Did you, you raise your hand over there? Okay, good, good, good. Because I, I, I might need... Oh, that was close. I might need your help today. Today we're going to be talking about forgiveness. Because it's such a key element of our faith and our walk of life. Does anybody follow the Jewish calendar at all? A <laughs> random question. Uh, this weekend was Yom Kippur. Does anybody know what Yom Kippur is? Uh, two people know, okay? So I'm just going to teach you something. Yom Kippur is, is in the Jewish faith, the Day of Atonement. Have you guys heard of that before? Dale, you've heard of this before? Good, 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 good. Uh, where people would ask for forgiveness for their sins, yes? And receive atonement from God. From the uh, Israel Institute of Biblical Studies, I had to look it up. In Leviticus 16.30, the Hebrew word for atonement, it does not just mean forgiveness. It's so much more than this. It, 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 it suggests a complete obliteration of sin. Man, that's intense, yeah? I mean, I don't use the word obliteration very often. Do you? Complete destruction of sin and a restoration to spiritual purity. Boy, what a big day in the Jewish faith. It's the day where the only day of the year where the high priest was permitted to enter the innermost sanctum. Who wants to carry this for me for a second? Do you mind carrying it for, us, for me? Thank you. Just, just be careful, okay? That's a little dirty. But, but don't drop it, okay? Don't drop it. The high priest was permitted to enter the temple, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the holy of holies, the most holy place in the temple. On that occasion, he was, he was performing uh, some different rituals, which I'm not going to go on to, but it was such a beautiful, beautiful day. As Christians, we understand that Jesus is our way to receive forgiveness, yeah? You guys understand that? He is our way to receive forgiveness. Thank the Lord, I don't have to butcher goats anymore. I mean, you can if you like goats. That's cool. That's cool. We had goats that we, they were stinky. They were stinky goats. We did not like them very much. And eventually somebody took them from us and they made delicious food. But in the J Jewish filter, sorry. Yeah, food is good. Yeah, we, we tried it. It was amazing. In the Jewish culture, they had to take a goat and, and, and cast their sins upon that goat and release it. Thank the Lord we don't have to do that anymore. Isn't that good that we don't have to follow the ways of ancient Israel? It, it just blesses me because I would be a terrible rule follower. Anybody else would agree with that? Like, man, there's a lot of rules to follow. It would be so hard. How often, let me ask you a question, how often do you think about forgiveness? Okay, today one, good job, today is number one. How often do you think about the topic of forgiveness? How about the topic of freedom? 
Yeah, freedom has been on my mind this whole week as I was getting ready for my sermon. If you read through the Bible, you're going to notice how often Jesus is talking about forgiveness. All the time. All the time. It's not a topic that he avoids. It's not something that he hides under a a blanket or something. It's something that he's so willing to talk about and address so that we can receive what? Freedom in our lives. The reason why we talk about forgiveness is really for freedom. Oh, thank you. How'd that go? Oh, man. (laughs) My little daughter, Harmony. I love you so much. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is about, help me out, freedom. Forgiveness is about freedom. And there's a constant throughout the New Testament and the Old Testament that, that listen up, man, mankind, we are so prone to messing up. Yes or no? We are so prone to mess up. If you don't understand that about yourself, uh, get married. (laughs) Just kidding, my love. Just kidding. But it's true. You realize how often you mess up when you are in community with other people. Boy, you realize how human we are when we're in a community together. We mess up often. Oh, it got quiet. We mess up often. Boy, oh boy. We messed up frequently. And that's okay. It's okay because there is freedom available and forgiveness available. In our lives, we're so prone to offense. Man, I do it all the time. I put my foot in my mouth all the time. Anybody else can relate to that? where they speak too quickly, and it's like, oh, man, I should not have said that. Ed, put your hand down, my man. I should not have said that. Or you do something, and you're like, oh, Jesus, you could have stopped me right there. But I should not have said that, but I should not have done that. Thank the Lord we have a way to reconnect with one another, and it's through the power of forgiveness. We must live in forgiveness, but also in repentance. We talked about repentance last week. In our daily lives, we need to do both. We need to live in forgiveness and in repentance to one another. We repent. When we repent to God, we receive his forgiveness. Here's a, you know, why do we need to talk about forgiveness? And I really want to use this hand to hold this mic, but I'm being very good at holding with my other hand. It's very hard. Harmony, I'm going to release you from this. Thank you. Ooh, Nancy. Okay. Hey, my friend. <laughs> like everybody's looking down. Please, not me. Please, not me. Please, not me. You're welcome. Why do we need to talk about forgiveness? Because of our brokenness. Our world is so broken, and, and it's so evident everywhere. And God's solution to brokenness is through forgiveness, receiving forgiveness, giving forgiveness, so that we can experience God's full grace and His goodness in our lives. Man, the song choices this morning, just excellent, excellent. We need to experience God's goodness in our lives. Ephesians 1, 7. Go ahead and grab your Bibles, and we'll have it on the screen also. Ephesians 1 7. In him, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished upon us. Forgiveness comes from God and from his grace. And, and when we receive forgiveness, we are experiencing, experiencing God's freedom in our lives. We're experiencing his goodness in our lives. Yesterday I was working at the, at the corn maze, and you know what I like over there is that I have a lot of time to think. <clears throat> Dads, do we have a lot of time to think? Sometimes we have to make the time to think and to dwell upon what God is teaching us. And uh, I was just thinking about how life-changing forgiveness can be for you and me. Man, if I start to believe what the Bible tells me about f- forgiveness... I can experience all of the goodness of God in my life. And so do you. 
I can change my life around. I can experience his freedom. I can experience freedom in my interactions with people if I start believing what the Bible tells me about forgiveness. And clearly, clearly, it would take a lifetime to just grasp the beauty of forgiveness and how it applies to our souls and the magnitude of what it means to be forgiven. We were forgiven for so much. We were forgiven Boy, oh boy, a lot, a lot. And it's just beautiful, but let's give it about 40 minutes and we'll see where we go. Here's the big idea for today, that forgiveness is not just a one-time experience. It is a way of life. We forgive, we are forgiven in order to forgive others. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray that you'll show us your heart for forgiveness, God, today so that we may become a people of God that is so quick to forgive one another and so quick to extend a hand of reconciliation just like you did. Open our eyes. Holy Spirit, have your way through this, this day today. Amen. Maybe I should have prayed before I started, huh? As a pastoral team, I'm going to release you from this, this fun stuff. Who wants it? All right, you're going to get it. Sean, I love you, brother. <laughs> just because you're avoiding eye contact with me. <laughs> As a pastoral team, we've been talking about what it looks like to keep our souls healthy, to keep our soul clean and to keep our souls healthy. Have you guys done a, a soul check lately? That's a good one. We don't, we don't talk about that on the news. <laughs> uh, but it's good for us to, to do those soul checks once in a while to make sure we're okay, you know? to make sure that we are in a healthy place uh, spiritually but also relationally, to see if our soul needs to uh, get some care by the Holy Spirit, some restoration. To keep a, a, healthy, a healthy soul, we must keep free from unforgiveness. In order for us to experience a healthy soul, we need to keep free from unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, that this, this nasty stuff that gets into our soul and that soils us. That is a hard word to say, soil and soul, just so you know. <laughs> so that we can experience the freedom that comes from Jesus. We can experience his true freedom, especially in our thought life. Anybody can relate to this? Boy, oh boy. Am I the best at making movies in my head? You guys relate to this? Of creating complicated, beautiful scenarios of what is and what is not. And sometimes we spend so much time in our minds just focusing on the wrong thing when Jesus tells you there is a solution right here and it's called forgiveness. And I just need to step into this forgiveness and experience it in my life instead of making those movies in my life, those Hitchcock movies of horror and dis distrust and bitterness and anguish and disgusting thoughts that I'm putting too much of my time on. Here's a funny thought. Chances are in your life, in your interactions, maybe on your way to church this morning, you might have a disagreement with somebody. Chances are maybe you need to forgive somebody today. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal that to you this morning whether they deserve it or not oh dude no pastor joe don't say that some people just don't deserve forgiveness is it awkward it got awkward but god births something in us to forgive even the most unforgivable unforgivable things all right, three things we're going to do today. I want to look at what forgiveness is not. Second, I want to look at what forgiveness is. Third, we're going to apply forgiveness to our lives. You guys better close the doors because we're going we're gonna to do this. Here's a disclaimer. As we talk about forgiveness, sometimes memories can come up. Yeah? If you're like me, you have a good memory and you don't let go of things. <sighs> Sometimes memories come up of things that happened to you or things that did not happen to you, that should have happened to you. Can we take those thoughts and submit them to Jesus? 
as they come up, can we just be ready to take those thoughts and submit them to Jesus? As, as those thoughts creep up, can we cry out to God for forgiveness today? That's what we're going to be doing together. Sean, I love you, brother. You're welcome. Forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. Forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. Sometimes the further removed from an offense you are, you feel like you've forgiven, but actually you've just forgotten. Forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. Forgiveness is not the same as making an excuse for an unacceptable behavior. Forgiveness cannot be an excuse. Have you noticed how often the Bible, uh, the Bible never talks about making excuses for things that we do? I'm just human. It's just my sin. The Bible never talks about that. The Bible never talks about excusing things that we've done or deflecting responsibility. Oh, that's just Uncle Fred. Hopefully nobody is named Fred here. Okay, good. Whew, that's close. You know, sometimes we excuse bad behavior because of, you know, like, oh, it's a family thing. I refuse that. I refuse that with all my heart. I refuse it because it's not healthy and it's not right. Forgiveness is not an emotion or a feeling. Uh, sometimes I don't feel like forgiving. Anybody relate to this? <clears throat> if you're a believer, yes. Yeah? Sometimes we, we don't feel like forgiving, but the Holy Spirit is prompting upon us to forgive. We, we control our emotions. We don't let our emotions control us. Here's the most supreme example from the Bible, found in Luke 23. I'll give you a second to look it up. Luke 23, verses 33 and on. It's about Jesus. When they came to the place called Golgotha, or the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on the right, the other one on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them that do not know what they are doing. And they divided up this clothes by casting lots. Listen to this. The people stood watching. The people were standing there watching him. Oh, man. I probably would be in the crowd too if I was there. Just watching what was going on. The rulers, they were making fun of him. They were sneering at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he's God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers, they came up, they mocked him, they offered him some wine vinegar, he said, and they said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And then there was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals, he just could not let go, who hung there, hurled insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself, save us. If I were Jesus, can you guys put yourself in Jesus' Jesus' feet, uh, shoes for a second? What would you do if you were Jesus at that time? Honest, honest answer. Go ahead and, and f throw it at me. What would you do? Don't say forgive them. No. You know what I would do? I would obliterate them. That is the right use of that word. Right use of the word. I would say, hey, don't make me come down. If you don't stop now, I'm coming for you. I'll take out my sandal and weapon. That's our human reaction, yeah? If somebody were to insult me, <clears throat> I would have such a hard time forgiving them. Can you relate to this? Well, let's read a little bit more. It's not just an emotional response about feeling like forgiving. It's actually, oh boy, I was thinking about this whole this whole image of Jesus on the cross. And uh, I think it's good to think about it. But he was beaten. He was bruised. He was mocked. Yeah, he was made to bleed. He was humiliated. He was probably in, in his first century underwear. He was insulted, you know, but he chose to forgive them. Forgiveness is hard work. Yeah, but it's not just about us. Jesus chose to forgive even the most brutal, hateful sin and acts toward him. Can you think about it? Can you close your eyes for just a moment? Think about his, his blood dripping. You can notice his, his flesh is opened up. And that's the reality of our Savior. His, his clothes are gone. The crown of, thro of thorns is digging into his skull. 
His, uh, his back is opened up. His, uh, his face is beat up. Probably has some bruised bruises everywhere on his body. He is aching. He is hurting. And his body is close to death already at that point. His, his, he, uh, you know, if I were there on the cross, which I was not, but man, I would just give up at that point. But Jesus chose, Jesus chose to forgive, not because of his emotions. I think that he saw, he saw the depravity of our souls at that moment. He could see as the sin of the world was put on his shoulders, he could see our souls, individual and collective, and see that it was worth the price to forgive. Sorry, I just got chills thinking about this. It's not just an emotion. But God was reconciling the world to him through Jesus' actions. So forgiveness is not about stuffing an offense away. It's not about just avoiding addressing things. It's sometimes when we stuff an offense away, it comes back even worse later on in our lives. Anybody can relate to this? That this stuff something away, maybe it's, you know, between spouses. Boy, don't do that. <laughs> Awkward. Don't do that. I think there's, there's a power when you're married of forgiveness that we have to discover that I, I can't remember where I read this but s somebody had said that you know uh, married people that have been married for a long time they're just becoming two very good forgivers <laughs> and uh, I think my wife is an excellent forgiver by the way she's gonna point that out there thank you honey all right forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is not passive it's an active thing it's a choice like we saw from Jesus's example it's a spiritual discipline also it's connected to our connection to, to God, connected to prayer, connected to worship. May I say, are you ready for this? And please do not get offended since we're talking about forgiveness. Forgive me ahead of time, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you feel like your faith is stuck, if you feel like your prayers are not going up, if you feel like your, your walk of, of faith is not going the way you do, it is very possible that you might have some unforgiveness in you fair and i'm speaking to myself as well when i feel resistance there's different reasons for resistance but sometimes there's unforgiveness that is anchored to our soul as dragging us down as preventing preventing us from moving forward in life in life and also in our spiritual life as well listen to this uh, let's go to matthew 6 verse 5 through 15 classic 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 teaching from jesus when you pray do not be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees you, what is done in secret, will reward you. Let's listen to this. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. We'll get into this. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Thank you, Jesus. And then listen to this. The Lord's Prayer. So this, then, is how you should pray. You guys know the Lord's Prayer? Do we still teach this? Go ahead and, and read it with me. Our Father in heaven... Did you guys mumble that part about forgiving us our debts? <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> I used to mumble that part when I was a kid. Anybody else? I was not a good forgiver when I was a kid. I was vindictive. 
I had brothers. I had to be a self-protect, okay? I have to protect myself by being strong and mighty and vindictive. Lord have mercy. I hope they don't watch this. This is embarrassing. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And then verse 14, for if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sin. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, when you stand prayer, that connection, that spiritual discipline that we have, that prayer time, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Is it, is it on there? Uh, okay, oh yeah, yeah. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Jesus, are you sure about that? Has anybody ever done that? If you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. So that we can receive forgiveness from our sins from our Father in heaven. Oh, what a teaching. What a teaching. What a life-changing teaching. If we were starting to do this, what could we experience together? If in this church body we started to do this as a very practical way of doing it. If you're starting to pray on Sunday morning and you hold something against somebody, go and forgive them. But don't make it awkward. I'm holding a grudge against you. I'm so bitter, Ed. Stop laughing. I'm just angry, man. Please forgive me. I think there's a release that happens when we forgive one another and when we, when we extend that forgiveness to others. I wonder if I'm a better forgiver or at asking forgiveness. Huh. What do you think? I guess better at forgiving or asking for forgiveness. Isn't it worth investigating for just a second? Are we better at, at receiving or giving? I like to hold my cards tight to me. I don't like to talk to people about forgiving them. Sorry. But if I do, I'm following Jesus' footsteps, and it's so good for my soul. So the Lord's Prayer is probably the hardest prayer that you pray as a, as a believer, but there's a correlation, a connection between receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness to others. It's so good. Listen to what, the, what happens when we, when we extend forgiveness. There's a release. Oh, man. If you've forgiven somebody before, if you receive forgiveness, there's a release. You don't get as tense anymore. You're not as anxious anymore. You're not as fearful anymore because you've received forgiveness and, or you extended forgiveness. We must forgive others because we were forgiven. And Paul was so good at explaining this throughout the letters in the uh, New Testament. Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Colossians 3, 12, 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, it's you. You are God's chosen people. Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with some people in your life, but not all of them. Bear with each other. And forgive one another if you have any, if, if any of you has a grievance against someone. <laughs> I almost got T-boned on one of our roundabouts this week. I had a grievance with that person. <laughs> and I did not get to use my, my honk either, my horn. I was like, my honky. <laughs> so I call it. I had, I had a problem with that. I'm like, dude, I almost died and I could not even honk at people and then i thought oh man i'm talking teaching about forgiveness this week uh okay well i'll forgive him that's fine that's fine bear with each other 
and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. He's talking to the church, by the way, to the church people. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all, all over, all those virtues put on what? Love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Forgiveness is also an act of love. I love how uh, uh, Craig Groschel, Groschel, sorry, Craig, I'm butchering your name, puts it, it says, forgiveness is giving others what God gave us in Christ. It's offering to other people the same grace that God has given me. I'm extending the same grace unto other people that God has given me. Man, if we could understand the magnitude of forgiveness, how life-changing this would be. That forgiveness is a faith response. Luke 17 says, Watch yourself if your brother sins, speak sharp words to him. If he is sorry, turns from his sin, forgive his sin. If he sins against you seven times in one day, if he comes to you and says he's sorry and turns from his sin, forgive him. Listen to the follower's response. Give us more faith. Give me more faith. Do you guys need more faith to forgive? I need a whole lot of faith sometimes to forgive. I need to be able to extend that forgiveness to other people. And yes, you're right. Forgiving is about believing correctly and exercising our faith in forgiving others. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, the Bible tells us that in fact we are captive to it. Do you realize that? We get ourselves in bondage by holding on to unforgiveness. We get captives. We, 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 we are unable to move on. Jesus came to release the captives. Jesus came to give you and I freedom of our sin and of our unforgiveness. Forgiveness is about love, like I said earlier. It's not about keeping track of wrongs. Sometimes I pray to God, that my memory would not be as good. And my wife laughs because it's true. I have a good memory, especially keeping track of things that have been done to me. It got serious in here. You're on the list. First Corinthians 13, love chapter, verse five. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Can you imagine what our lives would be like if we stopped, obeyed this verse, and stopped keeping records of wrong? Can you imagine that in your life? Can I speak this over you today? That maybe your struggle in life is because you're keeping track of all the wrongs that have been done to you. Instead of submitting them to Jesus at the cross and gaining his freedom in your life. Forgiveness, one more, is a humble ha act. It's letting go of my rightful vengeance and retribution and making things right for me. Forgiving someone else reflects the heart of the Father who forgave us in Christ. Sometimes it's just so hard to forgive something that's been done to us. Trauma, horrible things that have been done to us. And the list goes on and on and on and on. There's, the list goes on and on and on and on. It doesn't stop. Things that have happened because of humanity's depravity, because of sin, because of all of this. Sometimes it's so hard to forgive, but God is saying, I'm going to walk with you in forgiveness. As you submit it to God, over and over, as you submit this unforgiveness to God over and over, the Holy Spirit is helping you and walking with you in the manner of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we forgive. Not in the name of Jonathan. I can't forgive in my own name, but I can forgive in Jesus' name. I can, I can decide to follow what he did on the cross, forgiving us and forgiving others in his name, in his ways. Because by myself, I cannot do it. 
the application of forgiveness. Are you guys ready for this? All right, me too. The direction of forgiveness. Three applications of forgiveness. One, we receive forgiveness from God today. If your heart is not right with God, today is the day. Don't let it be tomorrow. Make it today. Don't let it be tomorrow because tomorrow could be too late. It's sad to think about it just as I was on the roundabout earlier this week and it could have been T-bone, it could have been the end of me. Tomorrow could be too late. We don't like to think about this. We don't like to think about the brevity of life. But however, today is the day. If today you hear God's voice that's pointing you to forgiveness with him, don't harden your heart. Forgiving others, whether they ask for forgiveness or they don't ask for forgiveness. Yeah? Whether people are repentant and they say sorry or they are not and they, you'll never hear sorry. I have so many relationships. That's why I moved away from France because, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Or am I? Okay. Sometimes in our lives we will have times where we'll not have that reconciliation. Our role as believers is still to offer forgiveness because it's good for you. And it's good for you to be in right standing with God as well. If you hold on to that grudge and that unforgiveness and that bitterness, it's going to just fester inside your soul and become worse and worse and worse. It's going to affect your relationship with others. It's going to affect the way you treat others, your coworkers, your spouse, your children, your boss. It's going to affect everything. The more you hold on to unforgiveness, the worse it becomes. It does not heal over time. Unforgiveness does not heal over time. I wish it did. It does not. And one more thing. You guys ready for this? Forgiving yourself. Maybe today you are at this point in your life where, man, I have messed up. Raise your hand if you've messed up once before. Thank the Lord. Raise your hand now. No. Sometimes we understand cognitively and emotionally what it means to receive forgiveness from God. We talk about it a lot as a church. That's the basis of our faith, yeah, forgiveness. Okay, we understand that. Sometimes, like today, we're talking about forgiving others. Yeah, and that's good. That's so healthy for our church body to go on to the next stage of our faith walk together. There might be some forgiving one another that needs to happen. That is very healthy. But the hardest part sometimes is forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself of what you've done or not done. Forgiving your cowardice, maybe, when you were supposed to be strong and courageous. Forgiving that you've hurt somebody that mattered to you years ago. I had a conversation with somebody earlier this week where we actually, I was studying through forgiveness, and I'm like, well, have you forgiven yourself? And he said, no, it's hard. It's hard because of what I've done. I've not forgiven myself. And so I helped him with going to that point of surrendering that to the Lord. That's, where, that's why we have the cross. We surrender again and again and again. And sometimes you're going to have to do it again and again. Because those memories are going to creep up of what you've done in your past. It's always at the wrong time. It's always at the wrong time. But what do you do? You bring it back to Jesus. Because you know that as you repent from your sin... God is faithful and just to forgive you. That's where we experience that freedom, where we bring it to the Lord. When we move from unforgiveness to forgiveness, we experience more of God's grace and his freedom in our lives. This was the, the, the core of my prayer this week. I want to experience more of God's grace. I want to experience more of God's goodness, and I'm taking you along with it. I want to experience more of God's freedom in my life. I want to just truly experience his joy in my life. Maybe you have some wounds of your past that need to experience healing. Can you position your heart today to be healed from unforgiveness? Anybody want to know what I was doing with this today? Me too. I love visuals. If you've received <laughs> this thing today, can you raise your hand for a second? Oh, you cleaned it, huh? Did you clean it on this shirt? Just kidding. Forgive him if you did. Nice. Your hands are like nasty. Oh, Harmony. 
when there's an offense in your life, you do not need to pick it up. When you get offended by something, you do not need to pick it up. If somebody is handing an offense or something that's going to hurt you, you don't need to accept it. Now, I appreciate you guys accepting it. But you don't need to accept it. You don't need to pick it up. Here's my problem with this. I've been holding on to an, this core for such a long time. Look at how dirty my hands are. Look how nasty they are. Anybody want to shake my hand? Eric, you want to shake my hand? Okay. When I interact with you and I'm holding on to unforgiveness, I'm going to use one of my other daughters for this. She's my firstborn. If I'm holding on to unforgiveness, <laughs> sorry, kid. If I'm holding on to unforgiveness in my life, it will stain my relationship with other people. Boy, get this down deep in your mind. If I'm holding on to this, when I interact with my daughter and I'm trying to raise her right, yes? As a dad, some people might understand, or as a parent, you understand. You're trying to do right unto the Lord for your kids. You're trying to teach them to follow the ways of the Lord. But if I'm, I'm dirty with unforgiveness and I interact with her, I will not put it on your head, I promise. <laughs> she gets, oh, that, it worked, good, good. She's affected by how I'm holding on to bitterness. Anybody know of a bitter person in their life? Maybe you see them every Thanksgiving. Maybe you see them at Christmas. If they are here in the room, let's pray for them. We all have those people in our lives that are carrying this bitterness, generations and generations. The danger of, of families is that sometimes we pass on that bitterness from one child to the next, to the next, to the next. And then we're all carrying in this, this unforgiveness in our soul. And this is who we are as a family. No more. No more in Jesus' name. No more. You get to decide who you're going to follow. Follow in Jesus' way and forgiving others, holding on to unforgiveness for the rest of your life. If you hold on to unforgiveness the rest of your life, you're not going to go very far. You're not going to go very far in life. It's going to drag you down and prevent you from experiencing freedom. Sometimes we become prisoners of our unforgiveness. Uh, I'm going to say it, this is a tool of the enemy of our soul to keep us captive yeah, and ineffective so that we don't experience God's freedom in our lives. If you are held captive by unforgiveness, please come and pray with us. I believe for freedom today. As we're going to be singing a song together of coming to the altar, I believe for freedom. I want to pray over you for freedom today. Sometimes we harbor unforgiveness. We entertain it. We make those movies. We carry it everywhere we go. Sometimes we deal with generational offenses or get passed down from generation to generation. You get to stand for what's right and forgive. If forgiveness and unforgiveness, then those things matter to God, it needs to matter to us as well. We need to apply forgiveness in those areas of our lives. If you've been struggling with this idea of forgiving somebody or receiving from forgiveness or forgiving yourself, as we sing this song, and worship team, you can come up. As we sing this song, come to the altar, the altars are open. God's heart is for you. God's goodness is flowing onto you. Close your eyes, ask for forgiveness, and receive God's freedom in our lives. I want to invite you to respond to, to what God is doing in our body. And, oh, maybe I need to wash my hands because I'm going to be greeting people after church. Like it or not, all of us are in a relationship together. If you're plugged into this body, we are all in a relationship, even if you're introverted, sorry. We are all in, a, in this together. And sometimes I have to, uh, I have to wash my hands clean. Can you remove it for me? Oh, your hands are dirty, dude. Sometimes I have to come to the Father and ask the Holy Spirit to wash my hands clean, to purify my heart, 
to clean me from my iniquity, to give me newness of life. Pretty clean? Pretty clean. Let's do some more. interact with people my hands are clean there's a verse in the bible i can't remember where it's in the bible somewhere where peter or paul or john or jesus you're welcome it's in the bible when we come to worship, the verse says, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I cannot quote it. It was Paul to Timothy. Here we go. I want men and women everywhere to come and worship God with clean hands. This is what we are called to do, to clean ourselves from bitterness, to clean ourselves from unforgiveness, to clean ourselves from things that are dirtying our soul and to experience the freedom and the joy to be in the presence of the Lord. Lead us in worship. Second Corinthians, 2, 2, uh, Second Corinthians 5, 17, 21 says, Therefore, if anyone's in his Christ, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us this ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Listen to this. He has committed us to the message of reconciliation. You and I, we are agents of God to propel reconciliation around us. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though Christ, God was making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him Jesus who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God four declarations that we can do today together. I declare that with the Holy Spirit's help, I will forgive others as God forgives, without limitations, without limitations. Lord Jesus, you are the blameless lamb that was slain for me. I will never forget the debt for which you forgave me. Don't forget the debt that we owe. Maybe that's you today. I will release others who have offended me. And I will release them unconditionally. Just as you forgave and loved me unconditionally. I will never allow a spirit of unforgiveness in me to open the door for the enemy of my soul to inflict pain and agony upon my body and mind. I will live in a spirit of forgiveness. One final thought. What if your, cho your choice to forgive others would be what brings them to Christ? What if your choice to forgive what has been done to you is what opens the door for them to know Jesus? What a responsibility. What a responsibility that we have. Let me pray for you. Jesus, hallelujah, you are so good to us, God. Thank you for the freedom that comes from you, Jesus. Thank you for the forgiveness that you poured out to us, God. Thank you because you've called us to walk in freedom with you. Freedom to forgive others as we've been forgiven. Freedom to forgive ourselves because you have forgiven us. God, today I pray that you will empower your people to go and walk in the way of Jesus, that we'll follow into your footsteps, Jesus, that they will experience newness, newness of life, God, 
that they will experience your freedom in their lives god as they are going along their day next week god i pray that freedom and forgiveness will be on their mind jesus that they will be going around forgiving others the debt as you've forgiven us god lord i pray for Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I pray for the captives in this place, Lord. People that have not experienced your freedom yet, God, I pray that today will be the day. Thank you because you are so good to us. Thank you for your goodness, God. I pray for your blessing upon each and every one of us, God. And I pray for your spirit to be with us in everything that we do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen and amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. You know, it's really easy for us to connect together. All you have to do is follow us on our Facebook page. You can follow the links below to give online, or you can stop by the office. Come and see us. We have this special gift for you, the Word of God for today. It's an easy daily devotional that will help you uh, to connect with God in a really awesome way. So have a great day, and we hope to see you back soon. Bye-bye.